All right, what you are about to witness is what may be a Herculean effort to get my dear son, the six foot albino boa constricted Nassai, into his feeding box and get him fed, despite the fact that he's been in shed for almost a week now, probably can't see very well, and bit the bejesus out of my arm last time I fed Only in my head when you leave me on red. Only in my thoughts when I'm wishing you were not in a past life. We were probably mad tight. You would probably act right. It would never feel wrong. Here it's not the same. Cause you always playing games. They pushing me away. Got me feeling like a pawn. Baby in the B scene, one in the same. Since you always acting wild, getting tired of the same old situation. Complicated, got us in take. This little beauty. Now, the only problem with this little beauty is he doesn't like me very much. And as you can almost see here. He poops on me every single time I pick him up. He is an absolutely stunning little captive bred morph of the California king snake, though. And he's just a little baby. You know I'm always pleased and you never had to think we could do this all night low when you say it's all mine. Alright, so well these two esteemed gentlemen over here uh, finish their meals. I'll explain this is a common concept amongst reptile keepers, but you know, people who don't own reptiles might not understand. One of the reasons why you always want to feed a snake, especially a big six foot powerful boa like Nasai here, outside of their cage is because you never want them to associate their cage with food. And so whenever I feed them, even this tiny little guy who nips at me all the time and you know couldn't hurt a fly, he still, I feed him outside the cage just to kind of build that habit and build those associations. Snakes might not be the most intelligent animals, but uh, you always want to build uh, associations with them because that's a way in which their brain works. So in this sense, they if they don't associate the cage with food, then they're less like, likely to bite you or to kind of have a feeding response when you're reaching inside the, the cage for them um, because of that association. Once they're in you know, the feeding container, they smell the food, whatever it may be, then they get into fighting mode or the feeding mode and you know, all bets are off at that point, but that's, you know, we will always want to keep that distinction as, you know, as a keeper um, to be safe and to kind of, you know, train the snakes, for lack of a better term, um, in a positive way that's best, healthiest for them and for you, the keeper, as well. Yeah. Let's go. It's legendary. In my heart, I'm playing darts when I'm with you. But I'm shooting in the dark, I'ma miss you. In my mind, I feel alive when I'm with you. But I'm rolling bad dice when I kiss you. In the dark, I feel the sparks when I'm with you. The Little Nippy here is clearly ready to uh, come out. And he, uh, still in his defensive feeding mode, is, you know, no stranger to assaulting the first thing that opens up his, uh, <laughs> his little feeding tank here. And uh, luckily for me, that just so happens to be my hand so as you can start to see he's already striking even with the plastic still here but I'm gonna move that because I don't want him to hurt himself while trying to hurt me of course and we're gonna see I know as soon as I um, 
He's just gonna bite me. Can I bite again? Alright, now I bite. Okay. And <laughs> we're not gonna go jumping out of the cage. Come along, my friends. You're a beautiful little guy. And I forgive you for biting me repeatedly, as you do every single time I feed you. You little brat. What? Look at that beauty. I'm gonna put him right back in his cage and get number three. When I'm with you, but I'm rolling bad dice when I kiss you. In the dark, I feel the sparks when I'm with you. But in the light, you see the scars from the pistol. And this right here is the absolutely stunning third star of our show here. He clearly smells food. You're okay, buddy. But we're gonna get him exactly what he wants here. Long enough. Gaia here is trying to tunnel his way out. There we go. There we got a bite. Oh, you, buddy. Yeah, get your munch on. Get your munch on. I would legitimately bet you that the Dryak here finishes his meal completely before Nasai does. And Nasai literally has nothing but the tail left. I told you. I told you. Slow ass. I told you. You wolf that down, buddy. You're a speed demon on and off the court. Ridiculous. Let's get this little guy back where he belongs. Little shawty came from Costa Rica. She got flowers on her sneakers. I work a little so I don't usually do no features. But I'll do anything to meet her. She told me, she told me that she was a teacher. I said I got some things to teach ya. But where's my, but where's my manners? Nice to meet you. I'm not like these Look. other people. This little attack demon over here. Brother, you've already bitten me. You've already been fed. What more could you possibly want? Haven't you done enough? Alright, so as you can see here, despite the fact that Mr. Nasai has already struck, he's already eaten, and he's completed his meal. He still is in a hyperactive and hyper-aware, very defensive feeding mode. So the fact that every time I moves, he is intently tracking me with his tongue flicking out. He's tensed up, he's coiled up, he's ready to strike again. This is not because he hates me or because he's an evil snake. This is simply because snakes have very simple modes that their brains enter, whether that's defensive, feeding, or just their, you know, casual everyday mode. And a snake like Nasai, who a two-year-old can hold and have nothing to fear when he's in his casual mode, still is something that, you know, even an experienced keeper, a professional wrangler like me, still has to be careful of because it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you smell like, how many times you've washed your hands, which I have about six times in the last 30 minutes, he's still gonna bite me as soon as I get near him in this mode that he's in right now. So of course, the difficult part is getting him back into his cage safely, ideally without being bitten because that's not good for him and obviously not good for me because he has an incredibly powerful strike. Uh, he is six feet of pure muscle. Um, with that being said, there's only so much you can do. You can wait, you can wash your hands and try to get rid of you know any possible smell that you might have but uh as you can see it doesn't matter to mr Nasai right now he is locked in on me and uh you know if i tried to pick him up from the front right now 100 percent chance i'm getting bitten now as much as i'm sure that would give you guys a very uh very good show for the video i'd really much rather not um and so i'm gonna wait just a little bit longer unless he gets too antsy and starts getting out of his little bin here um, before I pick him up and put him back in the cage.
But seeing as Asai has finally reached the edge of the bin and uh, clearly has discovered that he is not actually trapped in here and is ready to uh, very slowly make his escape, um, I think it's time for him to go back in the cage. Never to believe. Wonder how to stop time in the box, the key inside, no way to unlock a fear of mine. The fear resides deep inside the heart. The plans I see are fantasy, only till they're not. Sparks in the light with one shots in the dark. I refuse to choose between real and artistic, and I'll never write a lyric that can make me a statistic. But the hardest part is success. Didn't get bitten. Yeah, I am. All right, there you have it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully I was a little bit entertaining. I have a really interesting, you know, don't have 120 snakes like some, you know, reptile keepers do, but I uh, got some really, really cool, interesting snakes here. Um, and now they've all been fed, they're all healthy, ready to go. And uh, my big boy over here in the side is ready to, uh, to shed soon, hopefully. So they're doing great. And I uh, hope that was a little insight into what, you know, the, the process of keeping a snake looks like and what their kind of you know life is like outside of what you'll see in my other videos and things like that for people who don't necessarily know or maybe even care to know a lot about snakes hopefully this kind of shows you a different side of them and you know what taking care of them um, and what they do in the wild really looks like so uh thank you for watching see you guys next time peace can see leave and wonder how to live wonder how to heal only know to give Never to receive, wonder how to love.